dear students welcome back to discrete mathematical structure myself professor subramanya bhagwat your computer science coordinator last class i was explaining you about isomorphism what's isomorphism take one minute second and think yes what is isomorphism yes you are right two graphs are said to be isomorphic they have same number of vertices same number of edges and equal number of vertices with a given degree suppose i am giving you two graphs two graphs are having same number of vertices same number of edges and same number of each vertices are having same one to one correspondence equal degrees then we call it as isomorphic the two graphs are isomorphic can you identify two graphs are isomorphic okay we will calculate it first graph this is a first graph this is a second graph first graph contains how many vertices a b c d a b c d four vertices will you agree my point yes first graph contains four vertices second graph contains p q r s how many vertices four vertices so first condition is matched both are containing wait both are containing four vertices four vertices second one wait second one first graph contains how many number of edges 1 2 3 4 5 6 first graph what about second graph 1 2 3 4 5 6 edges so second condition also satisfied what is second condition number of edges matching then one to one correspondence suppose you say a is equal to p okay how many what is degree of a 3 what is degree of p 3 so no doubt a is equal in this p b is equal in this q how many what is degree of wait what degree of b 1 2 3 what is degree of q 1 2 3 no doubt b is equal in to q a is equal in to p and b is equal in to q okay so d is equal to s because what is the degree of d 3 degree of s is 3 what is the degree of uh, c is 3 degree of r is 3 no doubt this okay isomorphic what the other things same like okay a is equal to p we have understood a wait a is equal to p b equal to q c equal to r d is s we understood a b this ab is equal to pq am i correct then ad equal into ps ad equal into ps then dc equal into sr dc equal into sr or q r equal into bc then ac equal into pr or bd equal into qs bd equal into qs so one to one correspondence is there so no doubt two graphs are isomorphic prove the following two graphs are isomorphic object this very carefully first condition how many number of vertices are there in first graph four how many number of vertices are there in second graph four so first condition is mapped first condition is satisfied second condition how many number of edges one two three four uh, second graph what is the edges 1 2 3 4 so first second graph 4 vertices first graph 4 vertices first graph 4 edges second graph 4 edges uh, 1 to 1 correspondence v1 is equal to v1 or v1 to v2 edges there so v2 is equal to v4 and v4 is equal to v2 v3 equal to v3 that's all so our object is yeah v1 to u1 v2 to v4 to u2 v3 to u3 and v4 to v2 so one to one correspondence is a u1 to v1 u1 to u2 is equal to u1 to u2 please carefully observe that u1 to u2 is equal to okay here v1 to v4 v1 to v4 yeah second one u1 to u3 is equal to v1 to v3 u1 to u3 is equal to v1 to v3 then u u3 to yeah u3 to u4 is equal to u3 to v2 v3 to v2 v4 to v2 and u3 to v4 is equal to u u3 to 
u4 is equal to okay uh, this one okay v2 to v4 equal to u2 to u4 so one to one correspondence we are achieving so no doubt two graphs are isomorphic second one okay wait wait for a second so that concept will be very clear to you object that two graphs are isomorphic it's very simple okay i have clearly given you okay first object that how many number of vertices are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 here second graph 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so eight vertices what are the edges 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 edges if you observe here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 edges so degree is also same so one to one correspondence is the first one number of vertices matching number of edges matching and one to one correspondence is the so no doubt two graphs are isomorphic why a is equal to a dash b is equal to b dash c equal to c uh, c dash d equal to d dash like this way easily you can see two graphs are isomorphic next one show that the following two graphs are isomorphic Uh, it's very easy first one how many number of vertices object that very carefully how many number of vertices are there uh, u1 u2 u3 am i right u uh, then u4 u5 u6 six vertices second graph v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 six vertices how many edges are there object that carefully so that okay number of edges are matching so one to one correspondence is uh, very important here u1 is equal to v1 no doubt then u2 is equal to okay u2 is equal to v4 you make it so that wait so that concept will be very clear to you u1 is equal to u1 is equal to v1 no doubt okay u1 is v1 then uh, if you observe that yeah u1 to u6 edges sir. u1 to u6 edges sir. so you have to write okay here v1 to v6 edges sir. so u6 equal to v6 no doubt u6 equal to v6 next one object that v1 to v3 edges sir. v1 to v3 edges sir. okay why okay u1 to u5 edges sir. so u5 equal to v3 u5 equal to v3 next one is remaining okay v1 to v2 edges the u1 to v4 is the so u4 is equal to v2 u4 is equal to v2 like that way you have to make one to one correspondence it's a very clear first write the edges assume that first vertex u1 is same as v1 so next one okay uh, yeah same way next one yeah u1 to u4 edges the u1 to u4 edges the v1 to v2 edges the so no doubt u1 is equal to v1 and u4 equal to v2 like that way u4 equal to v2 like that way one to one correspondence you can see so isomorphic yeah same thing he has written next same way okay you have to solve this now show the following graphs are not isomorphic if you observe these two graphs this is not isomorphic how do you identify uh, no doubt Uh, three two graphs are having how many vertices 1 2 3 4 5 6 vertices 1 2 3 4 5 6 vertices first thing is matching number of vertices are same what about number of uh, edges wait wait number of edges okay wait wait so the concept will be very clear to you number of edges 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 number of edges are also match okay number of vertices 6 number of edges 9 both are matching but what about degree degree of each vertices if you calculate it wait degree of each vertices if you calculate it degree of a is this degree of this one is 3 okay degree of this one is 2 okay degree of this one is 1 2 3 4 wait degree of this one is 3 okay 1 2 3 degree of this one is 1 and 2 okay degree of uh, this one is 3 okay where okay if you observe this very clearly first graph has two vertices of degree 4 am i correct calculate it uh, wait 
cancel it very clearly so that you understand that yeah, okay first graph has two vertices of degree 4 okay two vertices are there having degree 4 this two one two three four this vertex you take a having degree 4 this vertex one two three four this c i'm taking two vertices of degree 4 okay where second vertices second graph second graph has three vertices of degree 4 three vertices if you object this a one two three four if you object this is a b one two three four if you object this is c one two three four so uh, this is a very clear to you point is so very very clear to you here degree is not matching so two graphs are not isomorphic because only here two what is a degree four here three what is of degree four so one to one correspondence is not there so no that's not isomorphic object this graph yeah object this graph show the following graphs are not isomorphic how do you identify? We argue that the first graph has four vertices and six edges. Will you agree my point? Yeah, four vertices A, B, C, D, six edges. One, two, three, four, five, six. But second graph, P, Q, R, S, four vertices are there. What about edges? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges are there. Here, six edges, and second one graph has seven edges. No doubt, both are not isomorphic. Show the followings are not isomorphic. How do you identify? We know that first graph has a pair of vertices of degree 4 which are not adjacent whereas the second graph has a pair of vertices of degree 4 which are adjacent. Okay. You have to identify. When class reopens, you have to tell me this. Okay. Next, very important thing. Yeah. Same concept is applicable for digraphs also. Digraphs is very clear to you. Uh, when we write the direction, you know, show the following diagraphs are isomorphic. Direction should match. If you object this graph, okay, wait. A is equal to Q, where B is equal to P. So, A to B edge stands for Q to P. Like this way, while identifying, okay, uh, that one-to-one -one vertices, one-to-one uh, -one correspondence is very important in diagraphics. Show the following diagrams are isomorphic. This we can show it very easy. While coming to the diagraphics, please observe that if I am giving a graph A to B, here also direction is matching. For example, A, B, this is X, Y. Both are same. You have to prove yes. Condition is that A is equal to Y, B is equal to X. Because A to B, H, you can write is Y to X. So, one to one correspondence you should have. It's very easy. This uh, assignment is actually very easy. You can easily solve it. Next is subgraph. What is the subgraph? Given two graphs, G1, G and G1, we say that G1 is a subgraph of G. Following condition should hold. First one, all the vertices, all the edges of G1 are in G. Each edge of G1 has the same end vertex of G1. Okay. Now let me explain you. This subgraph is very simple. If I remove a small part from this one graph, that will become a subgraph of that. If I remove this part, V1, V4, V3, uh, V2, this, this, if I remove and if I uh, write, if I paste here, copy and paste what I call, this is a subgraph of the main graph. The subgraph of the main graph concept is very simple. Subgraph concept says very easily, two graphs, okay, uh, all the vertices of subgraph should be available in the main graph. And each edge, all the edges of the subgraph should be available in the main graph. And uh, edge has the same vertices, end vertices should match. Then only if you remove a part from the graph and if you keep outside that will become a subgraph so that subgraphs all vertices should be available in main graph subgraphs all edges should be available in main graph subgraphs one to end vertices are matching if you object this v1 v2 this same v1 v2 v2 to v3 okay v2 to v3 then v3 to v4 then v4 to v1 and v1 to v3 and vertices are matching that is the very important thing. What is a spanning subgraph? Subgraph is clear to you. If you take a part from the graph, that graph will become subgraph of 
that graph. Each graph is a subgraph of itself because subgraphs all vertices should be available in main graph, subgraphs all edges should be available in main graph and one to end vertices should match. Spanning subgraph is simple. Spanning subgraph is subgraph of G1 of a graph G, spanning subgraph of G, whenever the vertex set of G1 contains all the vertices of G. Main graphs, all the vertices available in subgraph, then it is called spanning subgraph. Then it is called spanning subgraph. Main graphs, all the vertices, means what I say, you know, whenever the vertex set G1 contains all the vertices of G. Uh, if you object this, okay, this is a subgraph of the main graph because if I remove a part, okay, like this part, I am removing A to B, B to C, C to D, D to this part, if I am removing and I am putting here, this is a subgraph. But uh, what it contains all the vertices of main graph, so I call it as this graph as spanning subgraph of G. Why? If you object this from this, only B, C, D, okay, are taken. This is BCD, this is a subgraph, but not spanning subgraph because it's not containing all the vertices. A is not there. So all the vertices, subgraph contains all the vertices, that's called spanning subgraph. Given a subgraph, suppose there is a subgraph, uh, every edge also available, then it's called induced graph of G, induced subgraph. What is that? Suppose there is a subgraph such that every, okay, please try to understand that, okay, uh, what is a graph is, uh, subgraph is clear to you, uh, spanning subgraph is clear to you, induced subgraph, given a graph, suppose there is a subgraph uh, so that every edge a, a, B of G, where A, B belongs to vertex 1, edge of G1 also, then G1 is called induced subgraph. One example through I tell you, so that concept will be, very 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 clear to you for example for the graph shown uh, in this figure if you object that uh, what happens you know uh, the graph shown in uh, b this graph okay is a induced subgraph induced by the set of vertices v1 uh, v1 uh, v1 v2 v3 v5 if i take these vertices outside that all the edges associated to that should be available in our subgraph. All the edges associated with that. So that is called induced subgraph. Suppose if I take this, this not induced subgraph because some vertex I'm taking V1, V2, V3, V5, V5 to, yeah, V5 to V3, yeah, this edge, you know, this edge is missing here. So this is subgraph that not induced subgraph. Induced subgraph is very clear to you. If I take this one like, if I take the few vertices outside, all the edges associated with that should be available. Then it's called in induced subgraph. Next is edge disjoint set. What is that edge disjoint set? Let G be a graph. G1, G2 are two subgraphs of G. Then G1, G2 are said to be edge disjoint if they don't have any common edge. If they don't have any common edge, G1, G2 are said to be edge disjoint. G1, G2 are said to be vertex disjoint if they don't have any common edge and common vertex. If you object this, you know, it is to be noticed that edge disjoint subgraphs may have common vertices. Subgraphs have no vertices in common, cannot possibly have edges in common. Okay. For example, if you object this B and C, okay, this B and C. No doubt, okay, if you object this, okay, edge disjoint because I'm taking this, okay, uh, outside and this, yeah, this I have taken and this. So I have taken two, okay, uh, subgraphs where no edge is common. So this is called edge disjoint, but not vertex disjoint because V5 vertex, okay, it is available, okay. Try to understand the concepts very clearly. Next class we continue. Uh, wish you all the very best.